Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to look at training and development in human resource management. By the end of this video, you will be able to design training program, conduct training data analysis, and identify gaps in employee performance. Now, let us look at the definition of training. Training refers to a planned effort by a company to facilitate learning of job-related competencies, knowledge, skills, and behaviors by employees. So we do give training to employees because we want their skills to improve or we want to give them new skills needed to perform a given task. In fact, training is part of the employee capacity building in the organization and the responsibility of human resource department to make sure that the employees will train. Now let us look at the definition of development. Involvement refers to training as well as formal education, job experiences, relationship and assessments of personality, skills and abilities that help employees prepare for future jobs or positions. So we are basically saying that development is accumulation of skills, knowledge, experience needed for a particular job in future. So development is quite different from training because training is only focused on one is specific skills, but development is very wide. Education is part of it, relationship is part of it, even the year of experience, personality, all these are part of development. Let us look at the difference between training and development. Training focuses on development of specific job related skills, while development focuses on overall growth of employees. The specific job related skills is what you are doing currently. When we are taking you for training, we don't train you for a different job, but we train you for what you are currently doing so that you can master it very well. But for development, the overall growth, it starts from education or what you can call lectures, experience, relationships, etc. All these are under development. The next difference is Training is short-term oriented, while development is long-term oriented. So we are basically saying that training focuses on present objectives, while development focuses on future objectives. Let us look at the features or characteristics of training. It increases knowledge and skills for doing a particular job. What you are currently doing, you might not be doing it well, but after getting the training, you will become a master in doing that particular job. Feature number two, it focuses attention on the current job. Like I've told you before, the training is only given to job related. The training is not given to you outside what you are doing. The next one is concentrates on individual employees. We train employees at a time. Not all employees are to be trained at the same time. We take one or two for training, when they are successful, we bring in another set of people to be trained. But all this happens after conducting what we call the training need analysis. The next feature of training is relatively permanent change in employee behavior. If you have been someone who's not socializing with employees in the organization, then after receiving the training, we expect you to be socializing. So if you don't socialize with the employees after receiving the training, it means you have not gained anything. So training has been wasteful. So basically it's all about change in your behavior. So these are some of the features or characteristics of training. Now let us look at the objective of training. To develop specific and useful knowledge skills and techniques. So when you talk of specific, we are meaning narrowing it down to one aspect. We don't give you everything you need. We only give you what you need to perform the current job. The next one is to increase in productivity. Employees become very productive if they are trained. If you can operate the computer very well, then you are very productive. At the end of the day, the organization becomes also productive. But if you don't know how to operate the computer, then you are not productive and also the organization is not productive. So the organizational productivity actually depends on the productivity of the employees. The next one is to enhance employee motivation. Training is part of motivation. In fact, what motivates people sometimes is training. Because you know what you are doing and you enjoy it. 
But if you don't know what you are doing, you will not enjoy it. What happens if you do not enjoy it? You will feel less motivated and eventually you will quit the job. The next one is to prevent abstinence. Abstinence, we are talking about the state of being outdated. Technology is coming each and every time. So you need to be updated. Your skills uh, have to be updated. If they are not updated, then it will be outdated. What happens if it's outdated? You'll be kicked out of the industry. So basically, these are some of the objectives of training. Let us look at the approach to training. One is establishing the facts about the present and the future. What do you want to achieve today, tomorrow, and what do you intend to achieve in the next one or two years? So that is the approach number one. Training is given to employees based on those approaches. What you intend to achieve in the short term and what you intend to achieve in the long term. With the present, we're talking about the short term. Then with the future, we're talking about the long term approaches. The next one is planning a complete training circle. Training circle begins with the conducting training need analysis to identify gaps in employee performance, then rectify those gaps to training. So if you don't do the training need analysis, you may end up giving training to a wrong person. And what happens if you give the training to the wrong person? The time will be wasted, the resources will be wasted. So you need to make sure that the training is given to the right person who really deserves it. Let us look at the methods of training. We basically have two main methods. One is the on-the-job training methods. Then the other one is off-the-job training methods. We're going to look at them into details. To begin with the on-the-job training method, it's learning how to do the job better while in the role. This can be achieved using the following methods. One is coaching and mentorship. Two is job rotation. Then the last one is orientation. So when you talk of on-the-job, it means you are gaining the training or you are being trained while doing the job. It is not off, but it is on. You are the HR officer. You get your training as you are performing your role of HR officer. So when talk of coaching, coaching is all about one-on-one -on -one interaction between an employee and the, the trainer. The trainer could be your line manager, it could be your supervisor. Uh, job retention is all about taking you to work in a different section but within the same department. If you have been working as the salary administrator, then they can take you to work in the recruitment department. So these are all the same activities being done by the human resource. So job retention is basically taking you to different sections but within the same department. The next one is orientation. Orientation is in other what is the quality conduction? It's all about telling you how to do the things. For example, if you are new employees in the organization, then you need to be oriented on how the organization operates, who is your supervisor, or where do you report to, whom do you report to. Uh, the people in the organization, they have to know you. You need to know where your office is located and the other facilities the organization has. So it's all about orientation. And sometimes orientation can also be given to the permanent or the long-serving employees. For example, if the organization has purchased a new gadgets or machine or equipment, the employees need to be oriented on how those machines are operated. So basically, these are some of the methods of on-the-job training. The next one is the off-the-job training method. Off-the-job training methods occurs when employees are taken away from their place of work to be trained using the following methods. One, lectures, role playing, workshop. So with the off the job, you are actually getting the training when you are not working. When you talk of lectures, these are just classroom interacts between the lecturer and the students. But for you who's watching this video, you are not working as a student, but you're already a working class. It means this method is not for you. However, it fits you because of the nature of our operation. We operate online. That's why you are working at the same time taking your studies. Our role playing is all about assuming the responsibility of your boss. Okay, you act like your boss. If you are the finance officer, then you act as finance manager in order to learn. That's all about role playing. Then workshop is all about interaction. We have one person moderating the, the entire workshop, then you learn in the process. If there are questions you can ask, then the moderator will answer some of those questions. So these are some of the methods of training under of the job training. Now let us look at the training evaluation. It is an attempt to obtain 
information on the effects of training performance and to assess the value of training. Training evaluation is an attempt to obtain information on the effects of training performance and to assess the value of training. Anything is evaluation. You cannot talk of training when you don't do the evaluation. Because if you do not do the evaluation, how will you know that your training has been effective? Now, let us look at the methods of training evaluation. One is the humbling five levels of training evaluation. Reaction. Reaction will tell you whether the training has been successful or not. Negative reaction means the training has not been successful, but positive reaction means training has been successful. Learning. If the employees have learned something, they are doing the right thing, then they have learned. It means training has been successful. But if they have not learned, training is unsuccessful. Job behavior. The behavior of the employees towards the job, has it improved or not? If it has improved, training was successful. It has not improved, training was not successful. Organization. The way how you organize yourself, the way how you do your things is an element of training. If the organization level is very poor, then there was no training or training was unsuccessful. But if the organization level is extremely good, then it means your training has been so successful. Then ultimate value, what have you gained from the training? Have you gained anything? If you feel like you have not gained anything from the training, then you have wasted time. The training has not been success. But if you have really gained something, then your training was very successful. Now, the second method is Greek, Patrick, and pecuniary utility models of training and effectiveness. For them, they use level, level one, level two, and level three. A level one is all about the participation reaction, which you have already looked at in the previous set of training evaluation. The next one is improve knowledge and skills. We have already looked at it. And then the last level was what extent the participant change their behavior. So it's all about behavioral change. So we have already looked at those ones in the previous methods of training. So basically, this is what I had for you with meet in the next presentation.